everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie and I am here in the Disney Terminal at Port Canaveral, all checked in, just waiting to get on board. And in this video, I'm gonna take you through the process of everything you need to do to check in from home, all the forms you need to fill out through the DisneyCruiseLine.com, how to do safe passage, and then how easy it is once you get here. Your first step will be to go to DisneyCruiseLine.com and click Already Booked. You'll sign into your Disney account and then scroll down to where it says Online Check-In Status. Check in. This will lead you to good old Donald or another character and you'll click Begin Check-In. There are five parts to the check-in process. Guest information. This is where you'll give your name, address, birth date, and your immigration documents. For most people, that will be a passport or a birth certificate, but be sure to check before you begin your check-in. You'll also set up your onboard account. This is how you'll be able to charge things while you're on the cruise ship. Disney wants to know about your travel plans before and after the cruise. Once you've completed these three sections, port arrival time and cruise contract will unlock. In the section about your immigration documents, you should be prepared to upload a photo you have saved to your computer or your phone or take a photo. You'll also need to do the same process because they want a picture, a selfie, so they can identify you and match you to your immigration documents upon boarding. Obviously for kids, they won't have a photo ID, but adults will. If you're a woman, you'll have to indicate you're not 24 weeks pregnant. In the onboard account section, you'll either need to add a check-in, a credit or debit card, or indicate you'll be paying cash or other on board. You can also indicate what folks in other cabins can use your onboard account. Then you'll get to the travel plans. You'll need to click on your name for, to get to the travel plan. So that can be a little tricky. They'll want all the details. So what is your flight information? After the cruise, where are you going? Did, where are you parking your car? How are you leaving? If you're going to a Disney resort, what resort are you going to? If you're going home or to another hotel, what's the address of that? Then that will unlock your port arrival time. Um, in our case, we checked in a little bit late. So the morning times were gone. The earliest time we had available was 1 p.m. That you want to be pretty accurate about this as much as you can, but go ahead and pick the best time that works for you. Then that will open up the cruise contract section where you'll be able to review the cruise contract and agree to it. Um, that is a very special part of the legal ease of sailing the seven seas. You can opt to have the cruise contract sent to you via email if you'd like a copy or you can print it. And then that will complete your check-in. So for most people, this will happen 30 days prior to arrival. This will generate a port arrival form. You can print this form or you can send yourself an email so you'll have it on your mobile device. It creates a QR code. Later in this video, I will show you more about what happens exactly at the port. So when you click port arrival form, this will open a box, will allow you to print it. I also have Microsoft print a PDF, so I create a PDF and save it on my computer. Or you can send yourself an email. So this will be how you would access it mobily if that's how you're going to use it at the port. Then it gives you a link to the safe passage website. Safe Passage is the portal they use to verify your vaccination status. You will need your reservation number, the name that it's booked under, and your birth date. Then you'll have to agree to the terms of use. Now this was filmed in early September for an early September cruise. So some of the terms have changed since this was booked. You'll need to set up an account by giving your email, getting the verification code, and then setting up a password. You have to consent to the data authorization, consent for testing, and then this will be your home screen. So this will show you the requirements that you will have for your cruise in terms of pre-screening and vaccination. So again, the terms and conditions are changing as of September 23rd. But for my sailing, I had to be vaccinated, so I uploaded proof of vaccination. Here are the vaccines that are accepted. This is a very similar process to what you did with your immigration paperwork as well as your selfie. You can either take a photo of your vaccination card or upload your vaccination record through the website. You will click submit and then it will say it's pending. This is independently reviewed by Safe Passage. As of early September, you could also apply for 90-day recovery status, so recovered status. So that meant you tested positive and recovered within the past 90 days prior to embarkation. That has separate set of documentation, so the 
positive test result as well as the documentation. You will get an email from Safe Passage once your documents have been approved. Then that will open up the ability for you to order any tests. You'll say clear to arrive in your Safe Passage portal and you'll be able to order any tests you may need. So there are several options for testing if a test is required for your sailing. Remember, this was early September, so a test may not be required for your sailing. You have several options through the Disney site to order a test. This does not include testing options like EMED, OnPoint, your local CVS, your local Walgreens, your doctor's office. So these are just tests you can set up through Safe passage. So the first option is to order an at-home test from Inspire. So this is going to be, I think, the easiest option. You order the test. It's already linked to Safe Passage. Then once you take the test by having a person watch you over a video chat, everything is uploaded. The other options are to schedule an early embarkation test at a location near the terminal. So this would be one to two days before you board to use a third party COVID test, which is what I did through EMED. So I got my email from EMED. I downloaded my test results to my computer. I came back to Safe Passage to the website that talks about embarkation screening. Then I uploaded that information. So you scroll down to where it says the other option, which is the early embarkation third party COVID test. And then you give in all the information about the test. So this will all be on your test result. You'll indicate the day the test was taken, the test type. So it was an at-home antigen test, the provider. So in this case, it was EMED. It helps to spell it right. (laughs) Then you say it was observed. It was observed over a video chat and that there were printed test results available. And then of course I tested negative. So then again, you'll need to upload your test results, either take a photo or upload them. Again, the same process we've used for your vaccination documents, immigration, and your selfie. And then you just add it from your computer. Then at that point, it's also reviewed by the Safe Passage team. The check-in process was really easy if you had completed everything online, like I'm going to show you. So they just scanned your QR code, scanned it again, you showed your passport, went through security, and then you're here ready to get on. It makes it easier if you print your port arrival pass and form before you get there. And don't miss out on this cool viewing deck.